So, I guess uh, we're, a little, we're definitely early. We're definitely on the clock. Uh, welcome to Speaker Workshops, and now it is the uh, 210 talk. And uh, I want to say, just have a little bit to say about uh, our presenter, Sam Herb. So, Sam Herb, uh, just real quick, Councilor Nine, and I uh, also, I, uh, I think you're the very first black badge holder I know personally. Ooh. It's, wait, is that a radio? That's radioactive, right? Is that the radioactive one, or thou shalt not speak of it? Are we going to light this thing on fire? So, without much ado, Sam Herb. Thank you. Um, so, uh, long-time listener, first-time speaker, um, so let's get going. Uh, so you're going to connect to the wrong domain name. So um, for whatever reason, for the past few years, I've been very interested in domain names. And uh, this is kind of a look at some of the um, different ways that you can be tricked, or your computer can be tricked, uh, or you could be fished to connect to uh, the wrong domain name. Um, so uh, a bit about myself. Uh, software engineer. I work at a cool company called Akamai. Uh, we're hiring people like you. I have to say that. Uh, and uh, I have a uh, DEF CON 23 and DEF CON 24 Uber black badge with the uh, Council of Nine. Um, yeah, that's me at closing ceremonies this last year. Um, a disclaimer, uh, the opinions expressed here are my own, and no one was fished in the creation of this presentation, which will become a bit more obvious later on. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start out from kind of least severe and kind of build up from there. Um, and so just to get going, um, we have to start out with typo squatting. Uh, humans aren't perfect. They're going to connect, they're going to mistype the domain name they type in. Um, and a malicious person could register these and uh, trick somebody into entering their bank credentials, for instance. Um, the, so this example here is looking at all the one keyboard letter off variants of AmericanExpress.com. Um, if you actually look up the registration status of each of these, um, like the example here is QAmericanExpress.com. All but two of them are actually currently registered, or actively registered, as of uh, April, I believe. Um, I did all this in April, most of the research here in April 2017, so that's roughly when all this data is from. Um, so the reason why I chose American Express here is that it's long enough that no one's company name is going to be QAmericanExpress.com, whereas with a shorter website, you might get um, some legitimate websites, whereas I could argue that none of these are actually legitimate. Um, so building up from there, uh, we have to look at bit squatting. Um, this is one where your computer is actually going to get the domain name wrong by flipping a bit. Um, the example I gave here is uh, I swapped a bit on Google Analytics. And I end up with Eagle Analytics. Um, this is a very low probability event, but as most uh, phones and uh, personal electronic devices don't have error correcting memory, this happens at a non zero rate across the internet. Um, so, in order to uh, give a demo for this talk, I actually wanted to register one of these domains. And so, I actually searched for the one bit variants of googleanalytics.com. Um, so part of the reason for looking at googleanalytics.com is you want a website that people are going to visit a lot, but not mistype. Um, Google Analytics falls in that, as do uh, most CDNs. Um, so when I searched for domains, this was the only one available. Um, so I went ahead and registered it. Um, and I put up a server on it and got uh, a TLS certificate for it. And uh, within 24 hours, I t saw two what I would call hits. Uh, one HTTP, one HTTPS. Um, this is uh, two, uh, one an Android browser and one Android application actually connecting to my uh, server. Um, if you actually go and look at the source uh, website of where this came from, the source website says googleanalytics.com, but something within their phone uh, caused a bit to flip um, in such a way that they went to the wrong website. Um, now, uh, one other thing, when I actually, so with a, with a very popular website, this is, uh, from what I've seen, this is about what to expect. You'll get a few random hits per day. Um, once I got these hits, I actually took this down. But uh, I, when I turned on this website, I immediately was getting spammed by this one very particular domain name. And so I went to it, and then it was actually a, uh, 
it was a Swedish diving company's website had somehow managed to um, mess up their Google Analytics tag to point to my website. So uh, every person that was visiting their website was also vi connecting to this. Um, that's a picture of the uh, code at the bottom there. It's a little bit hard to read from a distance, but it's pointing to eagleanalytics.com. Um, yeah. Um, so uh, that's just uh, an example of uh, how to do this. Um, there's a, uh, if you're looking for more information on this, there's actually a really great uh, white paper that uh, Cisco put out, and I believe it's actually on uh, defcon.org if you search for it. Um, or sorry, no, that's something later. I'm getting these confused. Um, there was a talk at DC19 on this, I believe. That's what it was. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, being familiar with bit squatting, I wanted to look at, um, uh, or no, so yeah, there was a Cisco white paper. Yeah, this, that was this. Um, so uh, um, I wanted to look at uh, some other variants um, of bit squatting, and one thing that I noticed is that there are, have been some recent registered um, uh, top level domain names, or TLDs, that actually bit squat on other TLDs. Um, so in this case, uh, the uh, registrar um, requested .got, .got, which bitsquats.gov. Um, I reported that one in uh, April of 2016 to the registrar, and they claim to have implemented a fix. Um, it's not actually testable right now because you can't actually register those domains, but um, that's a very tractable problem because there's a limited number of .gov websites. Um, however, a recent one, which is .bom, actually bit squats all of .com, which is a much more intractable problem as there are a large number of .com domain names. Um, a funny thing about .bom is that it was actually objected to by VeriSign because it looks too similar to .com, um, and that objection was overruled, but it also bit squats on .com, which is very unfortunate. Um, I know it didn't report that one as uh, I'm not sure what value there would be from reporting that. Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, this is actually something that was mentioned in the Cisco white paper, but these are um, more recent uh, TLDs from that point. Um, so uh, again, a, so uh, BitSquatting can only, like I said before, it only really targets uh, random uh, end users. You can't really target a specific user with it, but you could target a user base such as a, a bank. If you could only steal a few credentials per day, that could still be a lot of money. Or if you're bit squatting a .gov website, that could uh, you know, get you a few inbound emails to an uh, intelligence agency per day, which could be significant. Um, so going to the next slide. Uh, so I gained a bit more uh, serious. Um, I, so a lot of the reason why I gave this talk, actually, is um, I want to look at uh, IDN homoglyphs. Um, a homoglyph are, homoglyphs are two characters that look the same. Um, but have uh, different meanings. Uh, and IDN is an internationalized domain name, which is something that if you're an English language speaker, you might not come across very often. Um, it's, uh, and uh, depending on your um, browser, you'll either see the, um, uh, their source PNA code, which is XN dash uh, dash, um, or the uh, ASCII equivalent of that. Um, PNA code is a way to, uh, encode, a, um, encode a, a larger character set into a smaller space. Um, and the format that's used, uh, you have the XN dash dash identifier. Um, this is all standardized, uh, followed by uh, the uh, in essentially English alphabet letters or standard letters, uh, followed by a dash, followed by um, a, uh, there's a standardized algorithm for actually computing uh, what comes after that. Um, there's a RFC on it and everything. I'm, yeah, I'm not going to give a great explanation of that, so I won't. Um, and so with that, you can end up with a, so that same machine will determine which letter and what location it will get placed into the um, uh, URL that gets rendered. Um, and I, so I gave uh, two examples here. Um, these are actually both registered domain names, uh, google.com, where both the O's are Cyrillic O's, and uh, time, I, I believe there's Cyrillic O's. It might be Latin, sorry. Um, and uh, time.com, where every letter is actually from the Cyrillic alphabet. Um, and uh, I'll show you how I found those later. Those are both uh, actually registered domain names. Um, 
So uh, I wanted to conduct a survey of existing homoglyphs uh, and IDN domain names against popular.com domain names. I wanted to look for people who were impersonating .com domain names. Um, I chose to focus on .com as that's where most of the popular English language websites are. Um, and I only speak English, so I'm very limited there. Um, so there's really three options if you want to gather a large number of domain names. Um, one is you could get the zone files. Um, for .com, that requires filling out a form, which really isn't that fun. Uh, and some of, the, some of the zone files are actually impossible to acquire, um, such as North Korea's, who actually leaked, I believe, last year. Um, you could go to uh, Certificate of Transparency, which is a log of certificates. Um, or you could go to a third party, and there are third parties that you could pay a few hundred dollars and get a list of domain names, but that isn't that fun either. So I chose to go with Certificate of Transparency. Um, and for this, I pulled down the Google Pilot log. Um, this contains about 100 million certificates. Uh, that's 96.5 million uh, domain names, uh, roughly. This is also completely searchable if you go to cert.sh. Um, uh, certificate Transparency is a, if you haven't heard of it before, is an initiative to um, log every publicly trusted certificate on the internet. Um, it's largely a Google initiative, um, but it is, uh, uh, there are logs hosted by other companies. Um, I chose the Google Pilot log simply as it's the largest right now. Um, so uh, there's another reason that I wanted to use certificate transparency. If, certificate was, if a certificate was registered, that means it's far more likely to have been used. Um, there are, are, especially with the bit squatting and typo squatting domain names, a large number of these are registered but never actually utilized, um, which I found interesting. Um, so uh, in order to use a CT log, I built a pipeline. I pulled down the log. I pulled out the common domain and uh, subject alternative domain uh, fields from that. I then filtered out all of the Punicode uh, domain names. Um, then I found, so there's a great uh, Python library called Unicode package where somebody actually went through and said what each Unicode character looks like. Uh, it's ASCII, or what, yeah, what it's ASCII equivalent looks like. Um, and they actually went through character by character and did that. Uh, which is a great amount of work. Um, it's very impressive. Uh, and so that maps um, ASCII letters to their English, or what looks like their English equivalent. Um, I then cross-referenced that list with the Alexa top one million domain names. And at the end of the day, I got 1,900 um, CT certificates that uh, impersonated uh, the uh, top one, Alexa top one million domain names. Um, I then also went ahead and modified the uh, Chromium unit test uh, to check whether or not they'd actually be rendered as puny code or whether you, uh, end user would see XN dash dash. Um, in a Chrome and Firefox right now, that test is actually standardized across all languages, so this would be applicable to all end users. Um, in other browsers, I believe Internet Explorer uh, or Microsoft will uh, take into account your local language of whether or not to, to determine whether or not you actually render uh, the Punicode variant. Um, so I've actually posted that list online. Um, there are a few false positives in there, like there are valid websites. Um, they just simply happen to um, look like uh, their English, equi English equivalent website. Um, but I chose to include those uh, as uh, I didn't want to actually filter all of these. Um, so <laughs> what is much more interesting is actually showing the results. Um, so these are all real domain names. I would encourage you not to visit any of these. Um, there are some really bad ones in here in that list, unfortunately, and I spent a decent amount of time actually reporting phishing websites to the uh, Google phishing page. Um, yeah, so some of the wor these are just some of the worst ones that I saw grouped by uh, what character they used. Um, so there's a Latin small letter K. Um, and uh, the L with a stroke looked pretty bad. And then uh, the dotless I was one of my personal favorites. I didn't know that was actually a thing before this. Um, and so that's actually part of the reason why I took this approach was I'm not a um, ASCII expert, if there is a, even is such a thing. Um, I really uh, tried to go about um, finding the worst abusers without having to necessarily have a knowledge of ASCII in the first place um, or knowing which letters to look for. Uh, and uh, yeah, kind of as expected, the most popular websites towards the top, towards the top of the list were much more likely to actually be impersonated. Um, so one of the more interesting things that I saw 
uh, which actually bypassed the Chromium check. Um, so the formatting here is uh, the last um, the last entry in that field is whether or not it bypassed the Chromium check. Um, in this case, they'd actually be rendered as uh, you know time.com. Um, so they only used uh, Cyrillic characters to represent uh, um, the English equivalent. Um, so uh, a breakdown of the Unicode blocks that I observed uh, while going through this. Um, so Latin and Cyrillic are kind of as expected, but there was a long tail, and uh, I really want to call out one at the very end, which is the Canadian, so it, Canadian Aboriginal Celtic uh, Unicode block. Uh, that one really struck me as odd, as I was, wasn't really familiar with what that was. So I went ahead and I looked uh, at that Unicode block and the characters that are contained in it. Um, so I went ahead and made a bunch of sample domain names, and I plugged them into the Firefox and Chrome um, uh, browser, and they weren't converted to their Punicode equivalent. Um, none of these were actually registered. Um, I simply tested whether or not they bypassed the Firefox and Chromium check, and uh, then went ahead and reported security bugs. And uh, um, the end result of this was that Chromium actually um, will now not allow the mixture of Canadian Aboriginal syllabic characters and English characters, which they did before. Um, and they're actually working on a much more comprehensive uh, anti-phishing fix, um, which uh, I believe is still a work in progress. Um, and uh, within Firefox, um, this uh, check is a bit more interesting because uh, Canadian Aboriginal syllabics actually fell under this thing called um, uh, uh, aspirational Unicode blocks, which allowed them to be mixed as part of the standard Firefox profile with their English language characters, uh, with English language characters, sorry. Um, and in order to uh, resolve this issue, they simply increased the level of that check to um, disallow mixture of English characters and uh, this aspirational uh, character block. Um, and I believe they actually um, uh, filed a request um, with some, I'm not exactly sure what agency tracks this, but. Uh, uh, some external request to actually update the uh, um, the rules regarding this aspirational block, as some of the characters do look like English characters. Um, so, as was news to me and the Firefox and Chromium engineers, uh, who actually were working on the fixes for these, uh, you can't actually register any of these domain names. Um, and this is where, believe it or not, policy comes to the rescue. Um, when you try to register any of these domains, um, you're stopped and uh, the um, the reason for this is that VeriSign actually has a policy that um, you can't mix uh, Canadian original uh, syllabic characters with certain other characters, which includes English language characters. And they have this for every Unicode block, uh, which uh, I was completely unfamiliar with. Um, one of the more interesting things about this is when I actually tried to register these domain names, um, because this is a failure at such a late stage in the registrar process, most registrars actually took my money, and in one case, I actually had to fight to get it back. Um, wasn't the biggest fan of that. Um, so, kind of walk through three different examples of different ways that uh, um, you're gonna, you, you or your computer could connect to the wrong domain name. Um, so now we're just gonna look at personal mitigations. Um, I'm kind of preaching to the choir here. Um, so the reason to use a password manager is simply because your computer won't be confused by any of this. Um, however, if you actually own or are responsible for any popular domain name, it's probably worth looking into whether or not somebody's impersonating you. Um, you could actually file an ICANN complaint uh, and issue a takedown request, especially if your trademark's being violated. Um, and uh, if you work in IT or are at all from, uh, uh, curious, um, I would be, something that's worth checking is what happens when you plug these into your um, uh, email client, uh, what renders. Um, yeah, that's probably going to depend on the email client. Um, so uh, as uh, I had the super transparency log, uh, I went ahead and uh, just had some fun with it. I uh, graphed the key types over time, um, RSA 2K keys dominate and uh, followed by ECDSA uh, P226 keys and then RSA 4K keys. Um, there was also this fun long tail which proves that uh, when you give users options, you, uh, they, you can always trust them to keep uh, be consistent. 
Um, some of my favorite ones in there is somebody actually issued an RSA 500 key, um, and there's also an RSA 2600 key as well. Um, and uh, at the very end there, there's a DSA 512 key, which is really unfortunate. Um, so uh, we actually have a um, intern this year uh, within my company who's uh, actually looking more into this. Um, and uh, I'll, if you're at all interested in this, I'll publish a link to it on my uh, Twitter feed um, with much more details on uh, what's actually contained in the certificate transparency log uh, when you look at the log as a whole. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, questions? Questions, Anthony, or anyone? Yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to grab the stage and feel free to come to the mic. Feel free. Oh, we got a question. That one. Um, I might have missed something in the beginning, but um, I think you showed examples of domains that were registered with those mix, mixture of English and non-English characters. Yes. And then later you said that that's not allowed. Is that just something that changed? or? Um, so it depends on which, um, which block you're looking for. So the reason why uh, Canadian Aboriginal syllabics actually appeared in this list, I actually went back later and looked at that uh, domain name. And it was two Canadian Aboriginal characters, um, not mixed with any English characters. Um, but it simply, when, when, got, when it was passed through the Python package, looked like a, um, I believe it was like a, like a BB uh, character. Uh, the characters looked like Bs, and so uh, it, it uh, looked like BB.com, like as the English language equivalent. Um, so that's why it actually appeared on this list, but you can't actually register the mixture. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, so regarding the don't click links suggestion, yes. do you have any recommendations for like any, any other mitigation? Uh, like for example, say there's like a 40 character hex thingy at the end of a URL. I don't think most users are going to like type in everything, oh, oops, I mistyped the 23rd letter or something. They're just going to copy and paste it. So is there like another way? Um. It's a good question. Um, you know, it's it's really a question of trust. Uh, I feel like, um, you know, do you trust the recipient? Um, can you uh, somehow verify that the link is valid in other ways? Um, you know, or just cut and paste the end of it, you know, type in the start of it. Um, it's an intractable problem at the end of the day. Right. Okay. okay thanks. Yeah. Once again, Shamurp, everyone. Shamurp.